Previously, a guy called Robert ordered a cup of coffee from Doctor Who. Today, we'll make the leap from coffee shop to your agile board, your Kanban board. And fair warning, things are going to get animated. Welcome to Development That Pays. My name is Gary Strawn, and this time we have no time for that subscribing malarkey. We have a ton of ground to cover. If you saw the last episode, and uh, if you missed it, this link will help you. If you saw the last episode, we came in with this guy, our famous barista, doing it all. Taking the order, making the coffee, and delivering it to the customer. Let's get that up on a board. As the barista is doing everything, I'm going to adjust the wording to match and build a board around it. Hmm, a little bit minimal. What could we do to flesh it out? Well, we could add a done column. And while we're at it, and to balance things out a little bit, let's add a to do column. Actually, the to do column makes quite a lot of sense, especially if we consider that our process extends out to the front door. In other words, it includes this queue of potential customers. I'll say more about that in a second, but first it's worth noting that although we don't yet have a Kanban board, what we do have is something that looks like, well, at least it will do when we change the text a little bit, looks very much like a scrum board. Very interesting. So we have three columns, two of which, I'm going to colour them grey, where things just kind of hang around, and one column where we, either in a coffee shop or in a development team, get things done, where we actually add value. Just so you know, there's been no sleight of hand. I'm going to animate the two side by side, or should that be top and bottom? And while I'm doing so, I'm going to correct a massive omission from the first episode. I'm going to be adding in some coffee shop music. Our hero takes the first order. People are coming into the shop and being added to the to-do column. Meanwhile, the barista is making the coffee and he delivers it to the customer. Did Doctor Who feature in the first episode or was that a different time and relative dimension in space? Strangely enough, he did feature in the role of an assistant of sorts. He arrived out of the blue at the moment when we decided to specialise. We had Doctor Who taking orders and the barista making and delivering the coffee. Let's get those processes reflected on our board. To do, take order, make coffee, deliver coffee, and done. Hmm, now I come to look at this again, I'm not really sure that deliver coffee merits a separate column, although deliver coffee would be an excellent definition of done for the previous stage, making coffee. So making coffee is done when the coffee is delivered to the person, or at least, you know, slammed down on the desk and some version of the name shouted out across the room. So yeah, let's squash those two back together, leaving us with two value-adding columns, one for Doctor Who and one for the barista. You're not going to want to see that animated, are you? That's going to take ages. Go on then. Pulling from the backlog, from the to-do column, taking the order details and over to make coffee. We tend not to put people and cups on our Agile board, so I'm going to swap them out for good old post-it notes. Did I just pull a fast one? The cups, especially those with their little check boxes, they are definitely Kanban. I don't think you'd argue with me about that, but what about the people in the queue? One of the ways we could square the circle would be to have people pick up a coffee cup the moment they entered the shop, although there's probably some issues around hygiene there um, that we're probably best not to go into. And actually, I don't think we need to do so because I think it can be argued quite strongly that the people in the queue are actually 
proper bona fide Kanbans. Think about it, each of the people in the queue does indeed carry information about their very personal coffee selection. Sure, we can't see it yet, but it's there all the same. It's worth saying that the queue, or rather the to-do column, is not only a product backlog, it's probably the best product backlog in the world, a product backlog that Heineken might have made. Here's why. It's ordered, it's self-limiting. When the queue extends out of the door, no one's going to join it. And it's dynamic, it will grow and shrink in response to our speed of working. Even the choices within that queue are dynamic. And it's always up to date, it's never stale. All, and product owners, this is where you'll get really jealous, all without any action on our part. Let's just make sure that everything is falling into place. So far, so good. Looks like things are moving along nicely. Whoa, just a second. Did, did you see that move? Who, who did that? Doctor Who, was that you? What did you just do? Let's rewind that. I'm quite happy with how things start with Doctor Who pulling from the to-do column. And I do think it is a pull. Sure, the customer has to be present but it's Doctor Who that decides when to engage with a customer by saying something like, can I help you, madam? So yes, it's Doctor Who that initiates the move from to do into take order. So I'm calling that a pull and the pull is a valid move. Roll the tape forward again. Yes, there, stop. Now that might be a valid move back on Gallifrey, but in our world, in our Kanban world, it is most certainly an illegal move, not a pull, but a push. We can't be having that. That's like pushing a cup into the poor barista's face. Leaving aside the whole health and safety implications, it's just rude. Now, back in the coffee shop, we avoided being pushy by using the space between the till and the coffee machine. A buffer between Doctor Who and the barista. A buffer between two adjacent processes, a mechanism for handling the transition, the handoff from one process to another. Surely, I hear you say, we can't represent an empty section of countertop on our agile board. Well, we can, and for the sake of everyone involved, we must. And it's with a heavy heart that I have to color it gray. Sadly, we're adding no value here. It's just post-its in a parking lot. As for naming, well, I'm gonna put that off until a little bit later. And uh, I suppose you're gonna want me to animate this thing. So I'm also gonna put that off for just a second while we take stock of the Kanban-ness of what we have created so far. Well, Kanban the object or objects, well, we have no shortage of those. That's all the post-its. Kanban principles, actually we have ticked off a couple of those. We have visualized the work by having the board in the first place, and we have made sure that at each stage we pull work through the system rather than any of that rude pushing behavior. Kanban the agile framework, well, we have the makings of a board that would work well for a team using, employing Kanban, the Agile framework. So yeah, we're getting there, not quite as far as we will get in just a couple of minutes. Oh yeah, by the way, that Kanban with a capital K that I use when I'm talking about Kanban, the framework, that's not necessarily a universal thing. It's kind of my shortcut. In the same way that Scrum with a little S is something that I expect to see on a rugby pitch, and Scrum with a big S is the Agile framework. Kanban with a little K is, you know, all of the things we've been talking about, but it gets a big K when we're talking about the Agile framework. So yeah, not universal, one of my shortcuts. All right, let's animate this sucker. We're off and running. The buffer column in the middle looks like it's doing its job. Very nice indeed. Ah, uh, hold on. 
Yeah, that's, that's not ideal. If you saw the last episode, then this mess will have come as no surprise. But what may come as a surprise is that it could have been a lot worse, at least on this board. And the reason for that is that the coffee shop had some constraints, some natural constraints that this board doesn't have. The till is either available or it isn't. And although the coffee machine looks like it's up for some serious multitasking, the barista probably isn't. Maybe he could handle two coffees at a time. There are a couple of ways we could add those constraints to our board. For now, I'm just gonna use horizontal lines. So a limit of one for the order taker, three for this as yet unnamed buffer column in the center, and two for the make coffee column. Let's take that for a spin. A smooth start, as we expected. The make column is now at its limit of two. And now the buffer column has hit its limit of three. No pileups this time around. I'm rather pleased about that nice flow. Less happy about our still to be named column here in the center. Actually, a more important question than what it's called is who does it belong to? Is it something that belongs to the system as a whole? Does it belong to our two-hearted order taker? Or does it belong to our barista? As we saw last time, we give notional ownership to the process that influences the buffer column the most. In other words, the process that lives just upstream from it. In this case, the take order process. And I can represent that notional ownership on the board. The take order column is now split into two sub columns, doing and done. Looks like the naming took care of itself. I think we're there. The board is now a pretty good reflection of the coffee shop situation. A Kanban board with Kanban cards implementing Kanban principles perfect for Kanban, the Agile framework. I wonder if you're feeling at this point that we've gone to quite a lot of trouble here without really feeling that we've reaped the rewards. Well, now that we have this board in position, we are ready, we are poised to really put it to work, to start to reap some of those benefits. And we'll be getting into that in the very next episode. But just before you go, I'd like to hear from you. Do you have an Agile board? And is it more like this or more like this? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time.